Thank you, Carol, for the introduction. Um, good morning, buenos dias. I'm really, really happy I found my way here today. I have to say I've been lost in Salamanca many times. I love the city, but for some reason, a Salamancan's idea of going straight and my idea of going straight are very <laughs> different. Some of it has to do with my sense of direction. Some of it has to do with the beautiful architecture because I'm always looking up and, and uh, can't find my way back. But uh, in any event, I am both very humbled and very proud to be speaking among such a committed and inspiring group of people. I've, um, over the last few days, I've been moved to tears several times by the presentations. And I have to say, though, today my presentation is a bit utilitarian, so I hope you don't boo me. But maybe you'll be relieved that you won't be crying today. Um, in addition to being the Director of Strategic Initiatives for the Forest Preserves of Cook County, I am also uh, on the Executive Committee of Chicago Wilderness. Chicago Wilderness is a regional alliance uh, of organizations that work to restore and protect nature and to improve the quality of life for all who live in our metropolitan region by protecting the lands and waters that we all depend upon. Um, many of you may have heard of Chicago before, maybe because of our gangsters or our murder rate, maybe pizza or skyscrapers, but we do have a great deal of biodiversity. So I'm happy to be talking about that today. Oh, we're all ready to the next slide. The greater Chicago region is one of several large metropolitan areas known as mega regions. These mega regions are where most of the US population's growth will take place. And by 2050, we expect 80% of the population to be living in these regions. You could see them um, listed on this slide. They're the Texas Triangle, Florida, Southern California, Northern California, and the Chicago Great Lakes region. As our nation, nation works to protect biodiversity and enhance quality of life, there is no doubt that these urban centers are critical to the success of conservation efforts. Alliances like Chicago Wilderness make sense in these regions, which are ecologically, organizationally, and politically complex. Chicago Wilderness is one of seven such alliances across the U.S., which together form the Metropolitan Green Spaces Alliances, or it, it is a national network of conservation coalitions that are in Chicago, Illinois, Cleveland, Ohio, Houston, Texas, Los Angeles, California, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco, California. I, I believe someone is here from San Francisco, and if you are, please try to find me afterwards. Um, the Chicago Wilderness Alliance helped found and currently chairs this MGA, or the Metropolitan Green Space Alliance. MGA members work together to bring national attention and resources to the landscape scale conserva conservation efforts in metropolitan regions. And currently, there are two more partnerships coming up. They're, they're represented by whoa, the green dots. I don't know how I've gotten so far ahead of myself. I apologize. Um, the green dots are located in Baltimore, Maryland, and, or the green stars are Baltimore, Maryland, and the Colorado Front Range. Today, we are focusing on the Chicago Wilderness Region, which is located in the Great Lakes Mega Region. There are more than 7 million acres represented across the region and it's home to more than 10 million people. It's a complex landscape that spans 38 counties across parts of four states and there are more than 500 municipalities with local control of land use decisions. So as you can imagine, it's a bit of a challenge to coordinate the efforts across political boundaries when, when 500 municipalities each have decision-making power. And I, this is the one instance where I would like to see more of a conservation dictatorship rather than a democracy, because it really is challenging. Now, in addition, um, the Chicago wilderness area has a vast array of different kinds of habitat types. We have prairies and wetlands and oak woodlands and savannas, rivers, dunes, and lakes. These habitats contain globally significant biodiversity among 580,000 acres, which is about 7% of the area. And the lands are protected lands and water. And the great thing about our region is that more than 100 years ago, civic leaders recognized that nature was an important part of the fabric of urban living. So they enacted legislation to protect natural areas so that those natural areas could be, forever remain a part of urban living. 
They knew that our regions would grow ast astronomically in the coming years and um, realized that people who live in concrete jungles needed a place to go for health reasons, for respite from the stresses of daily living, which I, Julie and Alex made a great account of. Well, that was a bit about the place we call Chicago Wilderness, and now I want to talk a bit about the coalition. This list is um, a list from the Lincoln Land Institute of elements that make an effective coalition. Chicago Wilderness is a big 314-member organization, and it, it works from the bottom up. And for, the, for effective coalitions, um, you need a catalyst to get together. And in our case, the catalyst was that a government institutionalized mandate prevented everyone from doing re more restoration work. So a group got together t to alleviate that issue. A regional fit of the problem with stakeholders' interest is particularly important in these complicated metro landscape. You need diverse leadership as well to get buy-in and diverse representation to come up with innovative ideas. And the governance structure has to be based on the culture of the area that you're working in. In Chicago, the bottom-up um, model is necessary. In other parts of our, our nation, it's not necessarily all that important. <clears throat> we have a regional strategy that we can all get behind, and uh, it's beyond the scope of what any one entity can do. We have structured processes for facilitating learning, and we learn from our work and apply that learning to our ongoing work. And we have the disciplines and the capacity to implement the actions of our strategies. So our coalition has a broad array of um, people who have different, different uh, backgrounds and, and in education and science and faith-based groups, and all of them work together to help come up with solutions. Not everything is a positive about having a coalition, though. There, it definitely takes more time and upfront cost. There's increased coordination and communication needs, and there are constantly changing visions. When Chicago Wilderness launched in 1996, the founding members consisted primarily of landholding government agencies and close partners that were working to restore the landscape. Going back to that need for a catalyst, for those founding organizations, it was all about what was happening on the landscape. At that time, when we came together, there were between 200,000 and 300,000 acres of protected lands that were under threat from habitat fragmentation, poorly planned development, changes in hydrology, invasive species, lack of natural processes like fire. And the big thing was the public didn't understand and they had no support for conservation. In general, there were few people. So the early conversations were very much about bringing together the right partners to get started and to, to really understand the region's problem so that we could come up with the strategy to solve the problem. Ultimately, the 34 founding members changed the way conservation is done in our region. This is a look at a life cycle model of how a collective organization grows over time. As it grows and develops, it's moving up a slope of engagement and growth, and you're moving towards sustainability. Some organizations may move up that line, and after completing whatever it is that they were working on, they may dissolve and go away. Or they may lose momentum because they aren't able to be strategic or clear in what brought them together. Or they may not be well organized and begin to fall apart. The slope shows Chicago wilderness's growth. We launched and attracted some new resources to the region in the form of federal funding. This federal funding was funding that wouldn't have gone to any of the other organizations that were involved in Chicago Wilderness. So money is really nice to get a, keep a coalition going. CW's founders were excellent leaders, and they borrowed their early structure from the World Conservation Union, or IUCN, and it fit very well. They fostered a culture of collaboration, and they focused exclusively on the mission and not on the organizational structure. They developed a clear and transparent regranting process for the federal funding. The members developed some shared tools like the Atlas of Biodiversity and the Biodiversity Recovery Plan and our report card on the health of the region's natural areas. All of these things are things that no individual agency would have done alone. It was necessary to have the coalition in order to develop these tools. We developed organizational capacity by um, 
incorporating the Chicago Wilderness Trust, which is a, a nonprofit arm of Chicago Wilderness to manage the private funds that we brought in. We brought in corporate partners, and we, we titled them the, the Corporate Council. They are active in the Executive Council of Chicago Wilderness, and they also contribute to the support of Chicago Wilderness. And along this continuum, in 2009, we started taking member contributions as well. We continue to develop the programs of Chicago Wilderness, but they were all over the place. So we, we got together, hired a, um, a strategic planner, and organized our work around four areas. And that includes the uh, initiatives to restore nature, uh, to implement a green regional infrastructure vig vision, focus on climate change, and, collect, and connect people to, na to nature through our Leave No Child in Sight initiative. And the way we get our work done is through more than 30 working groups. This is a lot of working groups. It's, it is like herding cats, as I, I said in my previous talk. There are disciplinary teams, the sustainability team, the natural resources management team, the education team, and the science team, and there are task forces that fall under these teams in order to get the work done. Chicago Wilderness's effectiveness as a collaboration is largely due to its carefully forged and very stable structure. CW's governance is based on shared leadership and consensus decision making. If one person or one organization is not behind something, we don't do it. We have an executive council that is chaired by my, uh, my agency, the Forest Preserve of Cook County, and there are about 54 members that agree to participate in setting the direction for Chicago Wilderness. Although all of the di ideas come from the bottom up, the Executive Council ends up making the ultimate decisions. In terms of our enduring impact, it's about implementing our regional biodiversity recovery plan. This recovery pl plan was adopted by the elected boards of many of the government agencies that are part of Chicago Wilderness, and we look to this plan to give us justification for some of the work that we do that is, might be controversial, like herbiciding invasive species or culling deer, um, even burning is con controversial. And this biodiversity recovery plan is something we could always point to and elected officials can point to and say, if somebody is questioning it, somebody who's not behind it, and they can say, look, Chicago Wilderness is behind this, my agency is doing this, and um, it's, it buffers the elected official from from its, the constituency who might not be um, supportive of restoration efforts. But when we're asked what the problem is that we're trying to solve, as if there is just one problem, CW's response is public understanding and support for stewarding our natural heritage for future generations. So we work very hard to establish a culture of stewardship, engagement, ownership, and civic re responsibility. Our members engage thousands and thousands of volunteers as citizen scientists who do frog, butterfly, and plant monitoring. And we have volunteer stewards who actually oversee restoration sites. And, and they manage volunteers who report to them. Because there simply are not enough um, professional people to go around. We depend largely on volunteers. Chicago Wilderness created a controlled burn training program for professionals and volunteers that is specific to Midwestern ecosystem. This again helps us um, multiply the amount of work that we can do by having more trained people. And this is our vision for the region. Our regional vision serves as a foundation for the metropolitan planning agencies. And that's new. Planning agencies never really thought about green infrastructure until Chicago Wilderness came into the picture. This vision is our collective effort to get beyond our current um, 580,000 acres that we're protecting. We want to get up to 1.4 million acres that is represented in this plan. The circled areas on the slide are large landscapes of regional biodiversity significance that serve as strategic conservation hubs for which our green infrastructure vision strives to connect via corridors and buffer zones around these areas. This is just a, a slide of how um, the vision has changed over time, and I'm going to be talking more about this on October 9th, which is um, more of a workshop. We also help municipalities 
implement green infrastructure visions because most of, of the 500 municipalities I talked about, most of them are not, do not understand the importance of having natural areas to absorb water, to clean their air, and for recreational uses. There are many actions that sustain. My, my time is up. OK, so if you want to hear more about this, come to the talk on October 9th, because I will be talking about more of the details of this and how, how um, the coalition actually works. And on behalf of all 314 Chicago Wilderness members, thank you for your kind attention. I look forward to learning more. And um, just in conclusion, this is, I, this is a model that can be used and I hope can be replicated and has been replicated across the US. So thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.